Welcome to the Life Changes Channel podcast, Carol. I am really loving that we are seeing each other for the first time face to face because I had a phone call that popped up on my phone recently and it was you and I was so happy to have connected. I'm so happy that you reached out and you had heard from someone else who had heard one of the podcast episodes and said, you really should talk to this person and, and reach out and talk to Dina. So I'm really pleased that you did. And naturally, I am always excited to find someone that my audience is going to really connect with and find their messages encouraging and help them feel less alone. And that is the the main purpose of, of this podcast is to to connect people with, with others like you. So, Carol, please tell us who you are, what you do, why that's so important to you. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. And you're right. You know, when I reached out to you, we had an amazing conversation um, over the phone, just two people it's like we had been talking forever so it's wonderful to be here with you now who am i and what is it that i'm doing well i am a executive leadership transformational coach and also a consultant and also a professional speaker i've been speaking since i was age 11. The work that I am now doing, I am doing under the auspices of Naked Leadership. And Dina, the qualifier is you get to keep your clothes on because <laughs> Naked Leadership is all about the inside work. And where does that come from? Well, Naked Leadership is about leading your life and lead your dreams. It really is uncovering that authentic, vulnerable, real you. You know, it's to let go of everything else that lead you. And I'm really excited about that because as I, you know, have worked with women and I worked with men is for individuals to really reach in and claim, you know, really reach in around their heart and claim that heartfelt strength that each and every one of us has and step into that I and mean, that's as i say is step up step out step forward speak up because really that is who we are and the world is waiting for each and every one of you you know it's it's easy to hide away Yes, lots of things happen in our lives. Truly, use our voice, be bold, be seen. And that takes a lot of courage, especially yes. if you haven't felt safe to do so at any point or for most of your life. It takes lots of courage. And as I... Uh, when I speak, I talk about courage. And people will say, well, what is courage? Everyone really, truly uh, defines courage, from my perspective, differently, because it's a little different for each and every one. For me, it was to realize that if and when I let go of fear, which is false evidence appearing real, and sent fear, as I say jokingly, but very seriously, to the back of the bus, and to allow courage to drive my bus. And for me, courage sits around my heart. And courage is like a muscle in your body. And when you discover it, you begin to work it and build its strength. And it's powerful. May not feel comfortable, but it's powerful. Oh, I like that analogy, Carol, because that gives us a visual of not having to step forward 
with our courage fully developed and all the confidence that it brings, but that is, it is a process of learning and strengthening that. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It is a process and it's one that anyone, everyone listening to the podcast can decide to step into in, you know, it's like having a cup of coffee or you're having a smoothie you don't gulp it all down at once. You take little sips and enjoy it and build it and build from there. So it's up for each one of us to take and live from and really step into being that leader in our life. Well, and like any journey or any sip of coffee or any muscle that you're building, it starts with that very first step, that very first action, which is one of the hardest ones. And then further along the road where it, you eh, then to kind of maintain it, that can be hard sometimes if you have a break in there and then to pick up the pace again. When you coach people through that first hard action or mental step or whatever it is, how do you do that? Well, for me, in coaching a, a client, it really is starting from that place of what I refer to as radically listening to you, the client, because it's your journey. And as I work with you and I'm listening to you and I'm observing you and I'm hearing you and I'm sensing you, Words will come up and through me. Questions will arise or a metaphor might jump out. And that is how and, and what I do with a client. You know, for example, Dina, I had a woman come to me. And for the first two times, she actually just sat in front of me and cried. And I just, you know, intuitively, as I radically listened, that that's what went on. On her third visit, she is sitting in front of me again. And the tears, you know, it's this river has opened up. And all of a sudden, as I'm watching her, out of my mouth come these words is, so when are you going to stop running? And it was amazing because the tears stopped. She shifted in her chair and she sat up straight and she looked at me. And then I said, because I had actually scanned her body and I said, and I noticed you're wearing running shoes. She said, I always wear running shoes. I said, hmm. I said, well, you might want to consider changing your shoes. She looked at me. She stood up and she left. And I didn't hear from her for several weeks. She then appeared one day and she said, I need to talk with you. And I smiled because I looked at her and I said, oh, I notice you're wearing walking shoes. She said, yes, I changed my shoes. And I want to share with you that what you said to me several weeks ago really was an opening and a wake-up call for me. I left and I went and registered for school that I was procrastinating on doing. I am up-leveling my skills. I have gone and I have also applied for joint custody of my child. So I was procrastinating and doing that. And I'll have you know that I also went out 
and secured a place to live. I said, wow, that's amazing. That is beyond amazing. She said, whatever it was that transpired between the two of us that day made me realize that I could do that, that I did have the power within me to make the changes that I needed in my life. And yes, her history was such that she had dealt with sexual assault. She had dealt with violence in relationships. So her, her stories were deep and very, very hurtful. But that was a pivotal point in her life where she decided to use courage and also to be bold and step forward. I mean, she has rebuilt her life. She has joined custody. She is now earning a six-figure income. But she did it. For me, in this holding space and truly, truly creating that feeling uh, that she could feel secure and safe from who she is, allowed her to bring up the answers that were within her. So in essence, Deanna, that's how I work with my clients. Because well, you, it's my journey, it's their journey. Exactly. And you create space for them to feel safe to be naked, like you opened with that yes. naked leadership. They can be raw and real with themselves and, and take an, an, a look yes. at what is holding them back or uh, what are they afraid of? How is that impacting their progress? And then, you know, that courage can be built. And that's incredible what she accomplished in that a period of time. And and overcoming the heavy, dark, difficult challenges that uh, may have had her stuck in fear or feeling ashamed or whatever it might have been. All of that, all of that. And, you know, clients generally who I work with our clients who have been on the treadmill of life for a while with running shoes and stuck on that treadmill. Yes, there may be trauma, unresolved trauma that keeps popping up in their life in a variety of different ways, whether it's such as in this client's situation, uh, she procrastinated in not moving her life forward or, you know, in other clients who are stuck in what they feel are endless jobs. Well, it's not that the jobs are endless, it's that the clients haven't discovered what life can be like if they step off the treadmill and discover who they are, mm -hmm. you know, or clients wanting to create a life for themselves, but they're full of fear. And so it's helping them replace fear with, with courage, you know. And then there are clients who suddenly discover that their relationship with someone that they truly love, in essence, has imploded because they've been on the treadmill of life, not dealing with their own um, hidden feelings of, uh, and emotions of traumas that are holding them back so really and truly it's you know it's that discovery of self is amazing and when people get it you know it's, it's to watch them blossom mm -hmm. there's a good way to say it. it's just like like wow and and for me that that is such a gift because i'm watching you as the client open up and blossom and be you with your potential and your gifts for the world. What a beautiful thing to witness, Carol, and to be a part of walking them towards that and just seeing, like you say, blossom is a great way of saying it. And they aren't just trying to be uh, 
or fit or be a definition that someone else has put on them or that they feel is expected of them. And they can really find who they are at that stage of their life and step forward. And as they meet their authentic self and as they start to get a taste of that courage and the potential that's there for them, it's just, it is an incredible thing to witness, whether you're the one walking them through it or you're in their circle and you you see them. And I've heard that from people where they'll say, oh, people have, you know, friends and family have said, what has changed? I, I can't put my finger on it, but you just have this different aura about you or a, the, you, the way you walk or the way you smile, or you just feel more relaxed. Your energy seems to have shifted somehow. And that's, that is what their family will be seeing. Now they, they can bump into some that don't want to see those changes. They aren't comfortable with those changes. And, and that's where, you know, their continued work uh, with you or someone like you can really help walk them through it. Now you have other um, ways that you help and serve people. Can you tell us more about some of the other initiatives that you're involved in and, and the other organizations you support? Thank you. I will. Just before I do that, I also want to share with you is that the gifts that I have received in the experiences that I have had throughout my whole life have brought me to this place of naked leadership. And, and I will share, you know, very quickly is, and people will say, well, how can trauma have gifts? For me, it really has. Whether it was, uh, you know, the traumas of childhood dealing with sexual assault, the traumas of a violence-filled marriage, and having, you know, to talk myself out of becoming a murder, uh, kind of suicide statistic, all of that, yes, there were gifts. And it's taken a journey up to get me to that place of looking at it all and saying, how do I, how do I give back and how do I serve others? Which then takes me on to the project that I'm, the one of the projects that I'm currently working on and very, very um, passionate about, and that is working with the Canadian Centre for Men and Families in helping them put together more services for men and families who are fleeing domestic abuse. People have said to me, well, why are you doing that, Carol, given the history of your experiences? My question back is, why not? Men and families need support as well as women and families. And I have worked in the area of services for women and families for over 18 years. But I stand back and I look at this and say, if we really want to make a change in society for family, regardless of what that family unit may look like, we need to provide services for women and services for men, because one in three women and one in four men are impacted by domestic violence. Ultimately, that also impacts the children, the girls and the boys. And when we work with both women and men, the feminine and the masculine, we are creating a better and safer society. So I am very, very excited, very passionate about services for men and families because there are not many services available. So in Alberta, at the moment, the, the Center for Canadians, oh, the Canadian Center for Men and Families, Alberta, is in the process of opening up a interim transitional housing project for men and families. So that's very exciting. And I am very thankful for the organizations that do exist in Alberta, in and around Calgary. I know there are three uh, women's shelters who are providing services for men and families. It's needed. It truly is needed. And 
the more we can do to help women and families and men and families, the stronger society really is as an overall community. So yes, I'm very, very passionate about, uh, about it. Well, I am so encouraged that there are organizations in our communities who are setting an example of compassion and support and and concern and reaching in, reaching out, being available, despite, you know, the negative stigmas that still are so powerful in our uh, culture. Unfortunately, it does keep people locked in those situations sometimes. And and then those families are also trapped in those situations. So by leading in this way and opening these conversations and realizing the need for these services and educating people around it, then what I find, people will stumble to have those conversations with someone they're concerned about because what if that person does say, yeah, can you help me? Yes, what you're concerned about is happening, but I don't know where to go or how to get help. If they are aware that their services are out there, they are more likely to have those conversations because now they have a, an, at least some type of a solution or an option to offer people. So it's so important that we keep having these conversations, that there are organizations that continue their very important work. And there is a misconception around the prevalence of abuse experienced by men. It's They are often represented as the perpetrators only. And that's not the case. That when, when you share that stat about one in three women and one in four men are affected, it's pretty close. There are a lot of men affected by this that society doesn't necessarily uh, consider. And I know we had this discussion in our phone call that I've had some um, mentors suggest that I niche more towards serving women in my audience and, you know, kind of eliminate any mention around the men. Like that's, that's really niche down and serve women. And I've resisted that over and over because for these exact reasons, because men, I feel, have even less support out there than women because of these negative stigmas and the the perception that they are always the perpetrator. And it's really hard for them to reach out and ask for help. And I'm also concerned at the high rate of mental health struggles and suicide amongst men. And if we eliminate another community, another place where they can find the resources and the support they need, that is not serving them. We do need to show up and support them. So the fact that you are involved with the Canadian Centre for Men and Families is really admirable, especially considering the background that you did share around your own personal experiences that were so traumatic and violent. And now you are using that as a gift and sharing that, uh, your, what you've learned. And it really adds a lot of weight to what you are doing. It's not just a feel good thing you're doing to try and make a difference. You want to change the culture that we're in from being what you had experienced and um, you know we, you know quit uh, and, and we use this analogy quit pulling people out of the river let's go upstream and I feel like that's that's what you're trying to do and and I have spoken to uh, Bill Fitzsimmons the executive executive director of, of the Center for Men and Families here in Alberta and super impressed with the programming that's available to support men and and their children yes uh i too am in, incredibly impressed with the programs uh that are being offered through the through uh, the canadian center for men and families um alberta for all men uh, across alberta because those programs provide that safety net for men to step into and begin to realize that 
they're not alone. There are others who have walked similar paths and that they can also learn to, in essence, heal and begin to rebuild their lives and to move forward and that there isn't anything wrong with them there you know sometimes they you know will say things like well you know i feel like it's just me and i'm you know it's like i'm going crazy and it's no you're not it's a matter of having that that support and understanding what it takes for you as the individual to rebuild who you are because in essence once you take that step to say enough i need to take care of me and to rebuild me which is all about naked leadership is but when you make that decision then it's okay what is it about me that you know who am i being and what are these emotions and how do i how and or what and how do I deal with that and also to let go of the blame and the shame and the guilt because that is so easy for society to point fingers and and apply and in essence too when a man steps forward and often too when a woman steps forward and says enough I'm out of that relationship they also, it's when they realize that support is there and they've been heard. Somebody is actually hearing them and believing them. It's like, wow, mm -hmm. floodgates open. And life begins to rebuild. And isn't that what it's all about is for us to we're here, we're here to serve, we're here to love and be for each other. So in essence, you know, when a man steps forward to those programs, you know, in Alberta, that CCMF uh, Alberta is providing, it's yay, like yay, because that is one more domino effect. And when a man rebuilds who he is, it's the same as when a woman rebuilds who she is. That's a domino effect in society. Mm -hmm. A positive domino effect. Well, in the example that they're setting for their children, again, yeah. it takes courage to step up. But the example they're setting for their children as well, that it's okay to ask for help to reach out even as a man you're not that's not a weakness that now you're asking for help we struggle with that and some of the programs are very practical parenting programs as well not just around helping strengthen and yourself and figure out who you are and move forward as as a person but as a parent mm -hmm. and if i may share with you Dan, a story that comes to mind and this was this is in my uh, time of serving women. But in that time, and an or the organization I was with, a man arrived at the front desk asking for help. And he stood there crying. And he said, you are the last organization that I have come to. All the others have said that I don't fit their mandate, they can't help me. He said, I need help. He said, first of all, I need help parenting. I don't know how to parent. I have a three-year-old and the country from which I came, it wasn't a man's responsibility to parent. I don't know how to parent. I have full custody of my child. Please help me. And he said, and I also have been the recipient of abuse, and I need help there as well. Now, a woman serving organization, there were those who said, no, we can't do it. But in my role, I stepped forward and I said, we do offer a parenting program. Let me talk to the facilitators of that program. The facilitators of the program said, yes, by all means, let's help him. 
I talked with the board of directors who at first were, well, you know, we are a woman serving organization. And I said, yes, we are. And if we want to help the women, we need to also help the men. And that's the argument I made. And they said, yes, okay, let's begin to serve men. That man was so grateful for the services that he had received. I think it was for six executive sum consecutive summers. He came back to say thank you. He worked with the organization for two years. And then, you know, six summers thereafter, he always came back to say thank you. That's a really great example of the difference yeah. that can be made. Can you imagine what that has done for his child? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, he he would come back with his child and it just to see the the bond that had built and you know the child was happy and well adjusted you know and, and being a child you know but it was just what a gift and by giving that gift to him we gave a gift to the child but in essence as well the broader impact to society because this man then felt heard and respected and built more and grew more of who he was. That's a gift to society, really and truly. Oh, most definitely. And the fact that that child had ex also been involved in a situation in a whole environment of abuse where there where abuse existed, whether that child was directly abused or witnessing it, it still is traumatic. And so to not only have been removed from that, but then to see his, see his, her uh, father supported and the father becoming stronger and more courageous and had reached out and was a better parent. And that child is set up for greater success and stability in their future life. That's a really great story. Thank you for sharing that, Carol. I uh, Go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I so appreciate you being here today, and I look forward to, you know, other collaborations that we can do to bring awareness to this. What else would you like to add for the listeners today? So what else would I like to add? Yes, ask? yes. Well, for all listeners listening, my question to you is this what I will leave you with, is who are you being to be the most loving you can be in whatever relationship you are in, whether it's with your spouse or a um, partner or at work or with your extended family? Who are you being? So in essence, that's my ask, but that's also my challenge to you. Because when you step into looking at that and answering that question, you might find a surprise or two waiting inside of you to step forward. So who are you being? That's really what I want to leave with your audience, because truly, you know, it's who are you being is allow that naked leader to step forward. I like that. We we can get caught in different roles. We're, we're, who are we being in, in this situation, that situation, and, and this environment? But it should be the same person showing up, and we should feel confident in that person. And I want to add one level of this is who are you being with yourself? Who, who do you see? Are you being a bully to yourself? Because that's who you're going to live your entire life with every single moment. So why not be your own best friend? Absolutely. Ooh, yes. Wow. <laughs> Ooh, yes. Thank you. Because that just, yes, that is so powerful. Being that so incredibly powerful because if you are being you and being your best friend, 
at all times, the rest will all come because you are you. And that is who is showing up for you and for others. Wonderful. Thank you, Carol. It was fun to hang out with you today. Well, thank you. It was fun to be here with you. As as always, I mean, you are a very warm, open, loving individual. And that's, you know, your light shines through. So thank you so much for being you, the naked leader. Oh, <laughs> I love it. I hope you found that conversation insightful, encouraging, and also a reminder to all of us that what we see isn't always as it appears. People are going through a lot of things in their lives and we would want that compassion shared to us and that is something that we can offer to others without judgment. Instead, be curious and, and reach out, reach in, figure out a way that you can make someone's day a little better and it might just start with a smile. I thank you very much for spending your time with me here today and I encourage you to please subscribe to the fo podcast, follow us on social media, check out our events. We have lots of ways that we can help you or someone that you love. Share this with a friend if there's someone that you know could benefit from this. And hey, keep smiling that beautiful smile because the world really does need your sunshine. It means a lot that you spend this time with us and meet our experts and professionals who can help you through whatever life changes you're facing. Please refer to our terms of service available on our website, lifechangesmag.com. The link is in the show notes. Our disclaimer, Divorce Magazine Canada, Life Changes Magazine and Channel and Divorce Resource Groups are intended to educate and provide quality, credible resource information the contents should not be used as factual until consultation with the appropriate professionals for any guidance. Divorce Magazine Canada, Life Changes Magazine, and Life Changes Channel, as well as the Divorce Resource Groups, do not constitute endorsements for, nor liability, for any claims made in the presenting of this information.